Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to Reform My Mind uh, podcast. Episode five. I know. Wow. You're really good at remembering these. I don't. I was going to leave you then to see if you did actually remember no, it because you forgot no. last week. Is it four? Is it five? Is it six? I don't know. I'm actually amazed. I'm so excited that it's five as well. I know. It's, it's one of my favorite numbers actually. Do you know? Five. Yeah. What number? Five, five, five is my daughter's birthday. Oh. So it's a bit of a special so a lucky number. number. Yeah, yeah. So this is our lucky episode today. Lucky episode today, guys. Yeah. No pressure. Well, <sighs> what a been, day. What a day. What, what a day. A, I, I, can I just say, before we start going into this, I have never met someone busier than Kay. <laughs> literally every time i come around it's like oh my god i'm so stressed oh my god this has happened this is this i've been in this meeting how the hell do you do it you know what i would actually normally go oh i'm sure there's someone busier than me i don't actually i feel like there is i feel as though there probably is to be honest but um yeah i literally just scoot from one thing to another to another to To another another. but i feel as though loads of people out there can resonate with that um especially when you're trying to multitask as a mum i think that's really well what that's exactly what we're gonna that's our topic for today is is. motherhood and the pressures what behind it all really and how how do you juggle it all you know some some mums can be busier than others i understand Mm -hmm. that that's normal that's what happens depending on your job and what you're doing but I feel like in today's society such a big pressure on this be the most successful in your career be the best mother be the best wife be the best cook be the best everything for your children and for your partner and it's something that's quite close to us isn't it that we do want to talk about because I think it's really important for the fact that so many women in our lives, friends, family, are dealing with the same issues all the time. And we we have a background that we understand how, what the pressure is like and what it does to you yeah. as as a as a person, you know, and how do you how do you go about it and being this perfect woman? It's, it's, you know, it fits really well, I think, as well, following our last episode mm. when we were talking about, you know, breaking beauty standards and what is the the perfect ideal figure or ideal, you know, beauty that's out there at the moment. Yeah. And I feel as though everything that we are saying really ties into this idea of being the perfect everything doesn't it you know Mm -hmm. alongside all of that is also the pressure to be the perfect kind of looking or fitting in with a certain ideal as well so I also feel like obviously we in a different age bracket I'm not going to mention the ages I'm not going to throw that out there but I just feel like after a certain age what I've noticed from the women in my life that it becomes even more pressure. I feel like in your 20s, you're not as bothered um, about what you do. You just gave away the age bracket there. Yeah, so we're (laughs) in our 30s. I think it's obvious. (laughs) We're just giving it away. (laughs) No, but in all seriousness, I just feel like when you go past 30, I felt more pressure. I don't know how you felt, but I felt like, you need to have your life together, you need to have your career set up, what you're doing with your life, what what your kids doing, how you're raising your children. There's all these like things that have been thrown at you that you just think, what this is too much pressure. And it comes to the point that it just becomes unbearable because you just yeah. think that all of these pressures are adding up. And then you have this thing called middle life crisis. Which I don't think we're there yet. No, no. I don't know. I I I feel like I've gone a bit through it, you know. Definitely not there yet. (laughs) I'm going through a middle life crisis, guys. (laughs) <laughs> someone help her out really i can pull you right out of that i know loads of techniques to snap oh, back out of that see i'm in good hands <laughs> no fun <laughs> have fun good old fun i can take you on that journey <laughs> no but you know what i mean though i feel like it's just 
yeah. pressure, pressure, pressure from everything. I, I find what it is really, well, w- what I can definitely resonate with. I think in your 20s, you just don't really know what you want. So you've literally, I mean, for me, it was just kind of all about trying new things and not really knowing yourself fully, just, you know, going with the flow, you know, saying yes to everything. And yeah. and then there's this kind of idea that when you do hit 30, that all of a sudden you're just going to have everything together. And, you know, you've then got a job, you've got a mortgage, you've got a car, you've got children, and you've got this perfect life as to what society deems perfect. Mm. And reality kind of hits that, you know, you're, you're an adult and you're responsible for all those things and actually they're not that easy to achieve and this is where this Mm. element of perfectionism comes into is that what is it that you're trying to achieve what's important to you or is it that these things that you're kind of striving for are quite unobtainable or what's the rush yeah what's the rush what are we rushing for I just almost feel like It is down to society and what's out there at the moment. And this is very relatable to men and women. Mm -hmm. It's not just for women, it's for men as well. I feel like in their 20s, men have been more pressurized to have everything together more than ever. If you think about it, you're not going to have everything gathered together by 30s and that's okay and you need to be okay with that there's no rush you can start anything at any age you want but I just feel like this is just something that's been ingrained in our brains because of social media and what's out there at the moment that you have to have everything figured out by 30 Mm -hmm. and it's like it is a mark isn't it it's almost like right you're 30 now what are you doing with your life? Off and you go, you adult. Off you go, you're an adult. But in all honesty, half of half of us don't know what we want to do. Yeah. Yet. <laughs> Yet. I think as well, though, there's a lot to be said about kinds of the expectations and the pressures put on us and the privileges that we've had growing up as well. Because I, you know, I definitely see in, in my work quite a lot of you know, people have access to a lot more resources and and privileges than other people do. Yeah, And and that is a huge factor, particularly in mental health as well. Mm. Opportunity and opportunity to, you know, education, to jobs, to what type of area you live in. All of those really can dictate kind of how you feel about your life as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's a big one what you've just mentioned then because not everyone has got the same opportunities so you know maybe in your 30s you're not gonna have the opportunity that somebody may have had and they could be your friends they could Mm -hmm. be your family they could be some someone really really close to you and it almost makes you feel that you're a step behind And what do I do? You know, like this person has got this and this and this, a family, everything. Like you said, a house, mortgage, responsibility, children in our case. And how do you navigate that in this world where there's just so much pressure from left and right constantly? It's tough. It's really, really tough. And I feel like a lot of people are feeling it right now. And it's almost this feeling of proving it that you've got it by 30 or after 30 Mm. and it's you know we need to realize as human beings that that's not always achievable like you you're not always going to be able to do that and that's okay and that's not something for you to worry about if you've not you know hit the peak of your career by 30 you know I, I know people that start businesses at 50 60 in some cases yeah that's a that's a huge thing I think imposter syndrome yeah is a really big one that you know imposter syndrome is no matter what your experience is no matter what your education is you just never feel quite good enough Mm. and I can definitely resonate with that you know in my field and it taps into kind of what we're going to be speaking to about today 
this idea of perfectionism and, and where does it stem from and, and why does it originate? And that feeling of never quite being good enough. Or in, there yet. Yeah, or there yet. Or having, you know, the the house that you want or mm. the children that you want or even, in fact, having children at all. Yeah. You know, or the type Can I just job. say, some people don't want children. They just don't. And that's absolutely fine as well. Mm-hmm. Because I know a lot of people that would put pressure on other people. Why have you not had kids yet? Mm -hmm. First of all, it's none of your business. Like, maybe I don't want children. And second of all, maybe I'm not just there yet. And I maybe want to have my children later on. I don't know if that stands from the fact that the older generations have all, most of them had children way much earlier than nowadays. Like, everyone now that I know don't start thinking about children until about, until about 35 or even older. Mm-hmm. And it's not that I'm saying that you're old if you're 35. But I'm just saying they're not thinking about having children in yeah. their 20s. They're yeah. just not. That's not something that crosses. They, they, it doesn't cross your mind at that point where if you look at our parents, like my parents have had me when they're really young. Yeah. Obviously, the way it's happened that I've had my first when I was really young, I was 22. Same. It was the, It was the same age as my mom as well yeah. and my dad. So that just, it was a case of just because how it happened. It wasn't like I had this big idea that I'm going to have children in my 20s. But I just feel like a lot of people don't think before they ask this question, you know, when they go into a conversation and go, how old are you? And then, oh, have you not had children yeah. yet? Oh, it's, it's those expectations of society. Yeah. And I think it really kind of boils down to being aware. And we're bringing this theme into every single episode because it's so important. Self-awareness. Again, you need to be it self-aware. Is, it's, it's about the language that you use. Mm. And quite often people will pass it off as, but I didn't mean it in that way. Or oh, well, you know, you shouldn't have taken offense to that because, you know, I was only saying. But in actual fact, we all need to be really aware of the language that we're using and how we're addressing people and thinking of the impact of our words on other people. But also on a deeper level, it's not just about stopping thinking before you speak. It's about really examining where those thoughts are coming from for you. Mm. And that's when you start to tap into the the biases that you hold and, and the assumptions because mm. we all have biases and assumptions and what they are, it's that internal working model yeah. that we have from growing up in our own environments because we all grow up in our own bubbles. We all have our own experiences and those experiences shape our opinions and our thoughts Mm. about the world and we grow up with those thoughts and opinions and they form a bias or or a lens that that we see the world in and you know you hear people say all the time oh you've got rose tinted spectacles on or you've got such a negative outlook on life and it's all shaped by this internal working model yeah how you've been brought up as well yeah so it's a big one it's a huge one so before we kind of stop and think oh I shouldn't say that go in a little bit deeper and think why do I feel the need to say that to ask that question where where's my assumption come Mm. from that you know people should have children by this age or people should be in a, a relationship or people should be in this type of partnership and and start to examine yourself and and where those types of thoughts are coming from and that's what we're really saying when we're talking about self-awareness I just honestly the so the way I am I would I would never in all honesty be brave enough to ask someone that type of question and I'm not I'm not maybe I'm not um, explaining myself right here but I feel like as soon as you have a conversation with someone and you feel the need to be like so I've got children, yeah, a, a big example. I've got children and I'm, you know, speaking to someone that doesn't have children and they're maybe in their mid-30s and they're focused on their career and everything. I It doesn't cross my mind to go and be like, oh, how about, your chil- how about children? Have you never thought about that? Because that's almost, to me, if somebody had that conversation to, with me, it would be a bit like, 
well, what what does it have to do with you, really? Like, but also, what bearings does that have on my character? And exactly, who I am as a person. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of just a bit like, is it necessary? Do yeah. you really have to ask that question? And also, we go on to the other side that maybe somebody has tried to have children and they couldn't have children. And they're really finding it difficult to talk about stuff like this. And obviously, I'm not talking about having a conversation with your best mate about it where you know the situation fully and you know where where they are. I'm talking in scenarios of like meeting a friend that you've not seen for years or someone that you just happen to have a conversation with. And it's just it's such a complex subject that I feel people again uh, throw it out there with without any thought behind it and you just think that might really affect someone's mental health because of their situation you don't know fully 100% what the situation is and why they've not had children or maybe they don't want children or maybe they just want to focus on their career and that's that's fine and I think it really though taps into thinking about the assumptions doesn't it that you have and also mm. the expectations that yeah. you place on yourself and other people and really it's about kind of well where does this all stem from because it's not just kind of you know certain expectations of society but it's also your own expectations on yourself mm. and I think yes there's a certain amount of external pressures that contribute to this but I feel as though there's a lot of people, myself included, I've been through this before too, Mm. that put enormous pressure on yourself to be the absolute best at everything. And that's not to say, you know, I want to be the best because I want to show everyone I'm the best because you're not in competition with anyone other than yourself. Yeah. And that's an awful competition to be But that's perfectionism though, isn't it? it? That is a form of... Oh, it's like, I mean, I think I struggle with it a little bit in that department where I just have to make sure that everything is as perfect as it can be. For who, though? And I don't, see, this is the, yeah, I don't know, actually, because in all honesty, half the time, I just think, is it for myself or is it for validation? Is it? what is it for because you do have to ask that question am I doing it purely for myself where I just go great Elise you've done amazing Uh, you know I'm really proud of yourself or are you actually doing it for validation exterior validation because we all have this inner perfectionism don't don't we we all want to do well in career Mm -hmm. as a mother as in any department but when we start putting those type of pressures on ourselves, we're not talking about, we're talking about real perfectionism here where... Well, there's a line, isn't there? There's there's ambition. I think what you're saying is there's ambition, there's that striving to be the best, which is healthy. And then there's this perfectionism where you're never quite good enough. And that's what you're talking about when it impacts your mental health. Basically, when you do everything in your power, you do everything that you could have done and yet you're not satisfied. Yeah. You know, what is the line? Like, what? when do we just go, right, this is unhealthy now. This is affecting my mental health. And it does affect everyone's mental health. I, I mean, I've had days where I've just been like, oh, my God, I'm not good enough. Mm. You know, I'm not... I'm not quite done this. Like, why is it not happening now? That's another thing which I think is really good to mention. When you start doing something... It's not going to happen overnight. It's Mm. not something that you're just going to click your fingers and it's going to be done with anything that you do in your life is a process and you just have to grow with it and have patience that you will get there eventually when it comes to, I don't know, like work or motherhood, you know, you're learning, you don't know how you've never done this before. I think with perfectionism, if we first of all define what it is because there's lots of different types and like okay you I, said, so you see i this has just caught caught me off guard i didn't know this well i think 
exactly like you've just said it's really important for people yeah, yeah, to yeah. to identify that in actual fact there can be really healthy forms of you know drive and ambition mm. that's a really good quality to have with yourself because you know you're constantly striving for improvement you're constantly looking at ways in which you can be a better person for example and that's a growth mindset which is that's healthy we'll come back to that later yeah. on but I think where perfectionism creeps in it's kind of that feeling like I said that you're never quite good enough that no matter what you do mm. it just is not meeting the mark yeah it's leaving you really feeling as though you've got you know, that imposter syndrome, that you shouldn't be there, that you don't deserve what you've got. And this is really that that internal perfectionism. So, you know, maybe I don't deserve this house I've got or I, I'm not the mum that I should be to my kids because they deserve better or I'm not quite good enough mm. to do this job. You know, I've, oh, maybe they're going to find me out. Maybe, you know, despite the fact that you've got all of the qualifications qualifications for the job or you know you're doing all the mo the most amazing things for your kids it's never good enough and then you've got kind of the perfectionism that you project onto other people so that nobody else is quite good enough you know your children have to be the best at everything they have to get the highest grades in the class they have to be in set one otherwise you failed as a mother you know, your mm. partner has to earn X amount of money by the time they're 30, for example. Otherwise, they're not a great partner. So there's different types of perfectionism that can creep into our lives and they can be really, really unhealthy traits to have. Yeah. But they can stem from places of kind of really low self-esteem mm. and experience. I actually thought about that when you were mentioning all these because I thought does this does this come from something deeper like insecurities self-esteem like you said because it all come it's it's like a deeper feeling rather than surface level isn't it so for you hit a nerve when you said that about motherhood I remember this very vividly I was in Mallorca and whoever's, if, if you're listening, you know exactly the what I'm talking about. And I was having dinner and I was kind of in that type of like really negative mindset just to explain how it all can play out when you do have this type of negative mindset. And I was just sitting at the table having dinner. And bear in mind, we're in a lovely place, having a great time. And I literally just like, burst and I just went I just feel like I'm not good enough as a mom and I just feel like whatever I'm doing is just not working and it's just not as I expected it to be and everyone at the table was just like what are you on about like what are you talking about mm. you like I ne I've never known anyone that does more for their children and you constantly like got attention to details but in my head at the time I was so distracted with all these other things that I thought that I'm not good enough and I don't, not at my standard where I put myself at in a way because nobody's put pressure on me but but me. So mm. I've put myself on that pedestal where I thought, right, this is what I have to be like. This is how I should be as a mother. And everyone from the outside were just thinking, what, what are they you They don't talk? see the same Yeah, things. they don't. And it just comes down to exactly what you said is that internal battle, mm. which is you and you. It's not necessarily someone that's putting pressure from the outside. Yeah, maybe social media and everything yeah. has got an impact that does get you to that point. But it gets to the point where you need to be aware of how you are thinking mm. about things and what is your thought process. And what's triggering it. And I think, you know, you've just hit the nail on the head there. There's lots of different contributory factors to perfectionism. And it's important for anybody who feels as though, you know what, actually I can really resonate with what Elise just said there. I feel like that too it's different for everybody where it stems from mm. and you know it's kind of one of them has this come from expectations that have been placed on me from either from a child you know mm. has it been that 
you know, we, we spoke about this on our last episode, that I was really validated for being, you know, top of my class, for example. Ooh. You know, yeah. or was it that my parents expected so much of me that, you know, I feel as though I'm not quite good enough because I was never celebrated just for who I was. Yeah, that's a big one, actually, you saying that, because that, again, hit a nerve. <laughs> <laughs> and we're hitting loads of nerves today. <laughs> beam, 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 where's the red button? <laughs> Stop it now. No, but it, it, it is because, you know, me, you talking and me thinking about all these scenarios in my life as a child, you know, being celebrated for doing great, brilliant, you know, we're not saying don't celebrate your children when they're doing well at school or whatever they're doing. But when you only celebrate them when they're doing well, like what is there left? Like what happens when they're maybe not doing so well? There's a key, there's a key thing here as well. Absolutely that. But also it's the disappointment that you show when maybe they're not doing as well or they mm. didn't hit that task mark or they didn't make the football. That team audition or, the or audition. Yeah. 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 It's the you know, do you celebrate them with all their, their flaws and, and then, you know, non-achievements as well? Because that's what makes people human. You know, it's mm. absolutely unrealistic to be the best at yeah. everything. Well, I've had the situation where it would be maybe one of my children wouldn't hit that, I don't know, audition or something, or they maybe haven't done as well as they wanted to do. And in that at that state, what what do you do? Because obviously you do want to encourage them because it's fine. It's not the end of the world. We try again. You know, it it it's life that we learn from our mistakes. Mm. Or if you've not done well enough at this stage, maybe you'll do well in a couple of months. You know, do you just sit there and just be so disappointed with them and just be like, oh? oh I think you a know. lot of the time that's what has been advertised as you know oh yeah. tough love you know it, I, it's oh, tough love mm. it, it's kind of it's making them try harder because I show them my disappointments but in actual fact that's not how our motivation works I feel that's got a bit of a backlash though because it's like tough love yeah great it, to a certain point again we're talking about that fine line where you just go okay well it's don't worry, it's fine. We try again. You encourage them to so try again. Yeah. So that I feel that that's different, and I feel that's where the growth mindset comes into it. Mm, so, yeah. you know, when we're talking about disappointment, it's about accepting that disappointments happen throughout life and preparing your children for that. Exactly. It's you know, it's part and parcel of, of life, and that's mm. what resilience building is. In order to build resilience, you have to experience disappointment disappointment you have to because that's yeah. what ultimately you'll build your coping strategies up to deal with in the future yeah. and there's a lot I feel nowadays of shielding children from disappointment from failure you know from 100%, you know yeah whatever's happening in the world it's that cotton wool protective ball and you know, we have to understand as humans that we experience adversity in the world because we have to build up our coping strategies. And it's and our your resilience. character. Character building. It's exactly. your character. You know, at the end of the day, you, how do you expect your children to go through hard, difficult situations when they're older if you're constantly going to just be like cocooning them and not let them experience some sort of like disappointment. We're not talking extremes here. We're talking level-headed, you know, like there's a fine line, but you have to let your children sometimes to understand mm -hmm. that failure is not a yeah. bad thing. And it's logical consequences as well, isn't it? It's, yeah. you know, for example, and this is really, again, just a, a very basic example of, you know, a child not wanting to wear a coat or refusing to wear a coat and there's a battle and <laughs> oh don't bring that coat off oh my goodness honestly every morning <laughs> but but you know if they don't want to wear a coat the logical consequence is 
let them go and be cold and wet. Exactly. That's... Let them learn that they'll be cold. Yeah. And I know a lot, it, this, this actually happened this morning, in fact, now that I'm thinking about it. My son just refused to put mm. anything on. And I was like, right, okay, you don't want to get dressed? That's fine. You're just going to have to be cold. And his face just went, well, I don't want to be cold. Well, mm-hmm. then you're going to have to get dressed. You have to sometimes let them come to their own conclusions yeah. that, you know, having this constant battle of, with them, fighting the fact that, oh, you should wear a coat. You need to wear a coat and be super aggressive about it. It doesn't always work. No. You have to just let them make their own mind because they're very clever. They're very, very clever yeah. and they under- understand more than we think they understand. And it was the situation this morning, a simple situation where he just didn't want to get dressed. I was like, that's fine. Don't don't you worry about it. You can just go with no clothes on and you'll just be absolutely cold. And he made his own decision that actually I don't want to be cold and I'm going to put my clothes on. And that was that. I think quite often this taps into also the idea of conformity as well. And we, mm. we have to conform to certain kind of expectations or other people judge us. And I feel as though this this really comes in a lot with parenting, especially if you're out in public or if you're out in a crowd, you know, with friends and, you know, your children are behaving in a certain way. And mm. all of a sudden, you know, you'll react in a way that maybe is not like you to react out of car- character, out of character usually, but, yeah. but you feel pressured to respond in a certain way to to your child yeah and i think we've all dealt with that at one point i mean come <laughs> definitely. on definitely the amount of times i've had my children on the floor screaming and i've just been like at this point you know the stress level that you're causing mm it will make me blow up because what you're going to do in that situation, you don't obviously want to cause more chaos into the environment because, you know, they are screaming from the top of their lungs because you've not bought them the snack that they wanted. It comes down to something Mm. so silly. And the amount of times I've been in a supermarket and I just like, okay, scream. Yeah. And my, my biggest thing that I do, which is my trick, which parents listen up, just scream louder. I just go, go on. Louder. I can't hear you. I just go, go on louder, please. I can't hear you. And they just look at me and go, huh? You want me to scream louder? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Please scream louder. Please. I Worse. beg you. It works every time. I bet, you, just... I bet you could scream louder too. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, literally, they just go silent. They yeah. go, I don't want to scream. I was like, here we go. There it's you not go. the reaction they expected. Exactly. But yeah. really, I think in those situations, it's just about kind of removing that expectation of other people Mm. and I guess kind of if we're bringing it back to perfectionism you know thinking about those past experiences and thinking about you know how is this impacting me right now yeah you know how is this impacting my lens on life why do I feel in this way why do I have this opinion Mm. of other people but more so of myself, this opinion, this expectation. And then I think as well, you know, that idea of really high expectations, bringing out perfectionism, there's lots of different other root causes of kind of that perfectionism as well, especially ones that tap into anxiety too. And experiencing trauma, for example, is is a big one, you know, traumatic experiences when things feel outside of your control can Mm -hmm. leave you feeling like you have to control everything around you and that for me was something that I really experienced when I had both my children because I had really traumatic births with both of them Mm -hmm. and they were both premature it was really awful and I think not a lot is spoken about enough about Mm -hmm birth trauma that women go through um but afterwards that's when I got my real perfectionism and I'm not it sounds doesn't it sound so nice as well when you say oh perfectionism I feel as though like that that word just I don't know it just projects this really idealistic view when for me that was such a traumatic time because but I went into this mindset and I can see myself now. The pattern was with, after both of them, everything had to be absolutely perfect. On. I had to have the best clothes for them. Every outfit was pre-planned. You know, the the, the baby 
um, the, the christening afterwards and, mm. you know, their parties and everything had to be a specific way or, you know, the house had to be in absolutely pristine, perfect order. Mm. You know, I went straight back to work six months after having them. I was also doing like my training. I was doing my master's and everything. And it just at one point crumbled because of the expectations that I will. had yeah. on myself. And now looking back, it was because when everything seems out of control, you try and control what you can. Oh, yeah. That I can resonate with that a lot. Like, obviously, your experience with childbirth was completely different to mine. I was on the other side, nine months, just sick straight, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't eat, couldn't speak to anyone, couldn't face the world, in fact. I was just basically in bed you or in that, hospital. Um, illness, didn't you? I can't. It, it's basically to just make it super, like easy for everyone rather than saying the long term it was like it's called a toxic pregnancy where it's not that something's wrong with the baby but it affects the woman in such a way it's morning sickness for the whole nine months it's basically morning sickness Hypergravitation. I would, yeah, yeah. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> Gravitation or something. something like yeah. <laughs> it's a very long word. <laughs> but in all honesty, it was, it, it actually, I remember this instance where I was dropping my daughter off at school and I had to, and it, I was taking this countryside road and I had to stop, like bang on into the middle of the road, literally open my door and I was just projectile being sick onto oh. the field. Luckily, one of the mums was driving behind me because we just both dropped our kids at the same time. She stopped behind me. She was like, are you okay? Like, is everything okay? And I said, honestly, I can't even see. I was seeing, you know, like those black dots. Oh, and I was like, I don't actually know if I can drive home at this point. And she was like, oh my God, she just gave me some water and she had some sweets in the car. And she just gave me loads of sweets to just get my sug- sugars up. But I wouldn't have known what to do at that point because I literally couldn't even grab my phone and look at it. Yeah. And it's just it just shows you the different type of situations that somebody can go through, like you with your traumatic birth. Mm. But with mine was more like the actual going through birth. The pregnancy. And yeah. what happened. And then as soon as I've had my children... I was like, oh my goodness, like I've had all this, time. is the baby okay? You always think I've been sick for so long and ill in bed all these months. Are they okay? You know, I couldn't eat a yeah. lot. Like, you know, I couldn't have a, like a really well-balanced diet half the times because everything just would just go. Come back off. Yeah. I mean, I had morning sickness horrifically for about four months. At the beginning, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. that was the absolute utter hell so I can't even imagine what it must be like for people to go through that yeah so imagine that nine, nine months, months. yeah you know it, it wasn't as bad with my second with my first it was just I was just I was in hospital a couple of times on drips I couldn't I couldn't I was basically like a vegetable I, I just couldn't like live life I, I was just in bed all the time and with my second, it was more like the actual feeling of being sick all the time. But I wasn't actually thrown off. Did you have kind of trauma flashbacks with your second Hun- from... Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And I was almost going, oh, here we go again. Yeah, we, yeah. It's coming. And I'm just like, I'm just not... I've also... I'm, I'm, I literally had conversations with my friends and family. I said, I would give birth any day. Just don't get me through that whole pregnancy because I just can't bear it. I can't bear yeah. nine months of just hell, like literally just being sick constantly and not being able just to enjoy your pregnancy, and you know. It's, it's so interesting, isn't it, that it's different for everybody because then also mm. I think you have where, again, perfectionism can, can tap in for different In people. different ways, yeah. Is when, you know, the baby's here and the baby's born, that can be huge, can't it, for women. It's like such a shift it's such a change and some women just seem to really embrace it and fall into that parenthood really really easily and and for others it can be a really difficult 
adaptation such a huge shift in anything that they've ever known and it can leave them quite often feeling as though they don't know themselves anymore Mm. and again that's another way in which that idealistic view can start to creep in you know well what is me who am I anymore and I should be this and I should be doing that and you know I should be you know breastfeeding or I should be making my own purees from scratch. oh my god yeah I was doing that them in the freezer. <laughs> I need to pack you know I need to pick organic foods but from this the farm is, shop myself. this is crazy you mentioning this yeah. because I was that mom because I felt even although my births were pretty straightforward and quick I felt like all of them nine months I've I've lost them I've literally lost control of something that was meant to be beautiful, embracing pregnancy, talking about it to everyone. Oh my God, I'm so happy I'm pregnant. I was literally just, I, I can't bear it. I'm not really happy. <laughs> I wasn't a very good person <laughs> either. <laughs> no, but it's like literally afterwards with my first, I was making homemade purees at home and I wasn't going to buy them from the shops. And I, I went into this like, real like perfectionism in my head I had to do all these things because I felt like for some reason I missed out yeah and you on my pregnancy make, you have yeah. to make up for what I had to happened. make it up and I can also resonate with women that I've had you know really traumatic births because that's almost the same impact that would have to you when you have your baby and you just think oh my goodness this baby must have gone through a lot of trauma you know it's Mm. been a lot going on through my birth and everything and you just think everything happens the way it happens and you just literally just need to let it happen you can't control everything Mm. you know giving birth is a very natural thing and I was one of them people that would always be saying don't put too much pressure on your birth plan because it never goes to plan and there's too many women out there that just have this plan perfectly this is what I'm gonna do this is what I'm gonna wear I'm gonna do my makeup I'm gonna want to do this <laughs> it doesn't this is gonna be my first leaving hospital it... photograph yeah I'm gonna I mean... on social media and this is the hat the baby's gonna be come in. on <laughs> this is the color balloon that I want and you know what it's huge now as well the 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 gender reveal and, and stuff like that yeah and there's so much pressure on people I know it's almost I know. suffocating I remember my gender reveal actually I didn't have one with my first but I did have one for my second and we were just about before COVID when it hit mm. and it was kind of like a bit of a birthday gender reveal and I just remember just being like oh my god I didn't have all these pressures obviously from the f- the first Those, time I had my yeah. baby and again it comes down to the fact that I had such a rough time with my pregnancies that I was like okay like I'm having my second you baby want to embrace them. I wanted to have the baby shower I wanted to have the baby gender reveal I wanted to have everything and guess what COVID hit and I couldn't have everything and it was almost again another yeah. thing that was thrown in the spanner where I just thought oh well I can't control everything and it, that's also okay what we're talking about here is the fact that you you can't keep this tight rope constantly thinking you're going to be able to control everything because it just doesn't happen no. like that I think as well there's the the kind of idea that there's not enough or there's not the kind of idea there is the perception and that everything is about the baby you know it's a new baby yeah, and exactly and yeah. quite often you know mums are overlooked and can feel as though well you've had you know you've had your baby now you're not pregnant anymore and you just go back to being, you know, oh, well, you're on maternity leave. You must have loads of time to. Oh, don't to be get the me started. Wife oh. To, you know, cook homemade mm. meals. Yeah, to, yeah. you know, have the, the perfect, you know, outfit on, dress the baby in all these lovely things. And also, you know, may well be that you maintain a career at the same time. And, and be all things to everyone and that like you say if you've got that idea of of it's got to be that way and there's no flexibility it can really really start to impact you I've had a a big almost like a traumatic experience after I've given birth and it was with my first 
And I just want to raise awareness with this because I don't, there's this like, idea that has been made about every mother should every woman should have this motherly instinct maternal it doesn't happen for everyone straight away and that's okay like I remember just being with this baby in my hand and just be like I don't know what to do what do I do yeah and it you know I absolutely love my children you know and I would do everything for them but at the time I was lost. I didn't know what I'm going to do, how I'm going to look after this baby. I was basically a child having a baby at the time in my early 20s. And I didn't have that instant maternal kick, you know, that people Mm -hmm. talk about, like every woman has it. Yeah, we do. But some women don't have it straight away. And some women have to, it's kind of a bit of a journey where you learn with your baby and you built yeah. those type of instincts and how you should be as a mother. And I struggled a lot with it at the beginning. I, I remember just thinking the fact that I've gone, I, I'm up and I'm dressed and I'm feeding my child, I'm happy. Because at this point, I was just so overwhelmed with everything that, you know, the idea of doing more was just not on the cards at the time. And then again, you know, being postnatal depression is a big thing and Mm. I think a lot of women can relate to this and I had it for a couple of months after my first baby even with my second I was in that type of mindset but I feel like a lot of people don't kind of overlook this or she like you said she's had the baby she should be fine now you know like she should be back to normal and living life how she lived her life before it doesn't work like that and everyone's got their own rate like the one how they go their pace maybe somebody can't adjust to being a mother straight away and that's again okay but it's just understanding that perfection again doesn't exist and you just have to go with the flow to what makes you comfortable at the time it's a very fragile time Mm. I've got to remember it's not something that happens every day you know you've just had a baby you need to be kinder to yourself and just say listen my body's going through a lot at the moment again after birth God, don't we know how many things ha- happen after birth? It doesn't just go straight to normal. There's weeks and weeks and weeks after that we're dealing with things that we never thought they're going to be as hard. So I just think that women just have this perception that as soon as they've give, given birth, they're just going to be back to normal. Mm-hmm. And that's just not reality. I think as well, there's a huge thing in what you've said there about loss of identity yeah and you know that feeling of who am I now you know this part of me that I kind of knew is gone and it's you know it's really difficult I feel to find yourself again yeah after some people don't you know ever they well it's it's not necessarily about never finding yourself again I think it's again about that readjustment of expectations on yourself and managing those expectations and and thinking you know well where am I right now and what is this bringing to my life right now you know what are the, the positive aspects about that and just focusing on really really small things every day and I guess that that's one of the big takeaways that I would say if you are in that situation is to not look too far into the future because quite often we've got a tendency to be you know well it has to be this way or it has to be that way and I'm really focusing on long-term goals when really we should only be focusing on on that particular day and being, being present and kind of having that appreciation of of what's around us and taking each day as it comes because our children aren't babies for for long you know time goes so so quickly and you know it's nobody else's journey but your own and if you are in that situation where you know you can resonate with, with what we're saying and particularly with what you've said about that feeling afterwards and you know not feeling good enough and worrying about you know what what's Mm going to happen in the future and never getting back to yourself again 
what I would say is just try and strip it back and just enjoy those small everyday moments you know take some time for yourself and really appreciate that those days aren't going to last forever it's a period of life and I think for me what's been really really helpful is acknowledging that life just doesn't go like that you know and it's not just one life in a sense either it's Mm. different aspects of your life there's there's always going to be a different chapter and each chapter brings new scenarios new situations new experiences and new challenges and I think life becomes a little bit easier when you look at it in chapters because chapters close and new chapters begin and being a new mom is a chapter of your life that you may or may not have again so and just enjoy it and embrace it and take each day as it comes yeah don't put too much pressure on that chapter on making it perfect because at the end of the day you know as you said I've tried really to live in the moment at the moment with my children as well and you know what it's amazing Mm -hmm. because you don't just sit there and just think oh what's gonna happen tomorrow or what you know Just enjoy that little moment. It doesn't have to be a big moment. It can Mm. just be literally playing on the floor with your son, with the cars, and just be present rather than constantly having this constant storm in your head of things that could happen or might not happen or, well, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So instead of, you know, stressing yourself about what could happen tomorrow, maybe just focus a bit more what is happening right now and how you can enjoy that moment a little bit more. And I know we all struggle with living in the moment. It's difficult and it's not something that I take lightly either. It's something that I feel like we're constantly going to have to work on for the rest of our lives. It's not something that happens overnight and it probably will never go away. Something that you constantly have to work at it and get better with it until it becomes a pattern, you know, where you don't know anything other than the fact that you are present and you're enjoying every little moment. But then again, it's like with any habit, isn't it? It's, you know, doing, like you said, little by little every day, and try and enjoy your little moments that you have with your family or with your baby, you know. And It's about recognising what's important, exactly, isn't it? Exactly, Because, yeah. you know, for me, a huge realisation, I always live by the mantra of you can never change the past. You can't go back and change the past. Yeah. But you can learn from it. Mm. And you can't predict what's going to happen in the future But what you can do is you can enjoy the present and you can be mindful of what you're doing in the present so that it doesn't impact, you know, your future. And it all comes down to really identifying what's important to you and what you want to get out of life Mm. and having that growth mindset. So we mentioned it earlier on about, you know, I kind of feel as though we never really have a plan for these episodes, do we? We we just talk and, and yeah. it, we bring what comes. And it's, I feel as though this is tied in quite nicely, actually, because it's Mother's Day coming up. And yeah. we didn't really have the, the plan to talk about motherhood, but it, it's come mm. out in this way because it's really linked to p- perfectionism and is what resonates with both of us. But I think growth mindset, in a way, is something that we can really instill in our children as well. And it's that idea of learning through growth learning through our mistakes and having the outlook of you know what if I make a mistake that's okay because as long as I learn from it yeah I can try again and I can learn from it and in fact every mistake is an opportunity it's an opportunity to grow and I think Mm. I that is one thing that has really changed for me since I started adopting that mindset Mm. that you know what it it might be really difficult and you know that might be a really bad thing that's happened but I can't change it and what's the point in in dwelling on it stressing about it yeah because that's another thing you can like you said you cannot change the past it's gone it's happened it's there, you know, we all have tendencies to go back in the past a lot. And I feel like mainly from my experience, that's when 
depression kicks in a lot. Absolutely. I feel like whenever I am thinking about the past too much, that's when I get into that rabbit hole of just like really negative, no, yeah. intrusive thoughts. And I always find as well, when you're worrying about the future, that's when too anxiety much, yeah. kicks so, in. Exactly. So it's like, you know, you have to think of it like, if you've got too much anxiety and you feel like you're really anxious, maybe you need to just have a little moment and think, am I thinking too much about the future? Am I worried about what's going to happen in the future? Because it's that's what has got the biggest impact on your day-to-day life. If you're constantly thinking, like you said, about the future every day, oh my God, I don't know what I'm going to do. What's going to happen to me in like years time? Like, what if I don't make it? What if I, you know, all of these thoughts, you're not going to be able to be happy where you are at the time. It, it's so true. And, you know, part of you know one of one of the biggest kinds of gold standard therapies that's used all around the world is is cognitive behavioral therapy um works particularly well for anxiety and anxious thoughts because what it is it's all about acknowledging the cycle of intrusive thoughts and how those thoughts really impact on our emotions mm, yeah. and how our emotions then impact on our behavior so for example somebody who's got a a really kind of intrusive thought about something that might happen for example you know that thought then kind of floods their body with hormones which is our fight or flight system which produces you know that that kind of worried feeling that emotion Mm -hmm. you know you start to then get you know your your heart rate starts pounding you start to get sweaty palms or you know you start to get jelly legs or whatever really unsettled however anxiety manifests physically for you then impacts our behaviors because you then might start to see avoidant behaviors they'll avoid going to certain social functions as an example or they'll start to engage in maladaptive kinds of coping strategies Mm -hmm. you know they might start I don't know, going out and drinking all the time, for example, or whatever behaviors they use to, to cope with that certain thing. But quite a lot of the time, if you track it back, it will stem from those particular thoughts. That one moment where you've allowed your thoughts to take control of your mm. yourself, really, and not at the time maybe not recognizing the fact that you are feeling like that and not have that moment where you reevaluate what's happening and uh, you know it it's very hard and it's really difficult and we're not saying that you might overcome this overnight it, it's just a real step little step every single day as let maybe one day you'll be able to do more than other days and maybe other days won't be as successful at managing those intrusive negative thoughts but at the end of the day what's more important that you're doing it yeah however little you're doing you're doing it and that's the most important thing and that that's okay you know th- this is not something that's easy and it's not something exactly. that can be done overnight but it's important that kind of people understand there is no magic wand for this and yeah you know it's quite often really examining where those thought processes are coming from so to I mean to link it back to what we've been talking to today for example that expectation that you're placing on yourself to be the perfect mom or the perfect wife or have the perfect job what are those thoughts you know where where are they coming from Mm. are those thoughts you know you have to have this job or you have to be in this house by the time you're 30 or where where are they coming from what yeah. why are they there who you know who is that saying that to you it's and what can you do to challenge them so it's all about trying to prove the thoughts wrong trying to look for evidence to 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 challenge them really well if i haven't got this job by the time i'm 30 what's going to happen you know if I'm not earning this amount of money by the time I'm 35 what's the outcome of that and it's challenging them and it's also speaking kindly to yourself and you know I think with perfectionism in particular it's just being a little bit more self-compassionate and celebrating Mm -hmm. 
the the really positive things that you have day to day so living in the moment enjoying what you have around you Mm -hmm. really kind of focusing in on those nice aspects nice qualities about yourself and about other people as well yeah but also enjoying life you know, when you're constantly stressed about what's going to happen in the future or look back at what has, what's happened in the past, you're not enjoying your life. And you, you know, you look back a couple of years and be like, oh my goodness, wh- where's all that time gone? Because it does literally go that quick where you look back and just think, wow, all of this time I've been stressing about this, where in all honesty, you had nothing to worry about at the time because you know, in most of the times it ends up better than you've ever thought. But that's only when you are kind of to yourself, when you do take all these little steps where can improve your every day to day life where you can enjoy the little things. And we're not saying that you can't go and do something that you really enjoy and go on that holiday or whatever. But just be kinder and just a bit more compassionate, as you said to yourself, because at the end of the day, you know we're only here once Mm. and if we're not going to enjoy the life that we've got and what's given to us then what's the point yeah and that applies to others around us as well so if you you are recognizing that maybe you place too high expectations on those around you it's about thinking of the impact that that has on them someone's mental too. health yeah 100 percent. because you know we all have at a certain point high expectations of something or someone or of yourself but in all hindsight if you're realistic are they too high are you setting the bar a little bit too you know to the point that it's just unattainable you cannot achieve that and you go to the point that well what am I doing am I am I just at this point just putting all of that pressure on that person or yourself is this healthy because it's not it just makes more conflict between people it makes more conflict with your mind with the emotions and everything that you deal with on a day-to-day and I think what we want people to take from this episode is just be kinder and don't try and rush life don't rush it you know it everyone's got their time it happens when it's meant to happen and by rushing it constantly you will just forget what you have and living in that beautiful moment that you've got with everyone around you enjoying the small things but I think as well it's embracing difference Mm. because you know we were talking earlier on about quite a lot of this is attributed to our biases and our expectations and you know those internal working models that we have challenge them as well you know embrace diversity embrace difference yeah embrace embrace the quirks the quirks (laughs) we've got enough of them we've got loads of quirks that's quite rich coming from us really isn't it i know yeah yeah. we do actually embrace each other's quirks a lot like there's one thing that i love about our friendship that we never ever have just been like oh what judgy no we're just not we just really embrace it actually in every way and it's amazing and it's nice to be able to you know i understand that not everyone maybe has that type of friendship with their friends but just embrace your friends quirks you know that's what you love about them okay so what are my quirks (laughs) Oh, you've got a few. Yeah. I know this is. Oh, she, she just yeah. said that. oh, you've got quite a few. <laughs> no, I think in in all honesty, what I love about you, you're just you're just so easy, like going. You go with the flow. No, but in in a good way. No, so no, 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 no. I didn't mean it like that. Oh my god, here we go. No, but she's just super, just relaxing to be around. Like you're not that type of person. Just like oh, do this, do this, 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 and then, like okay. super rigid. And I just feel like half the times when you are in someone's company like that, you are more relaxed. So you just, and again, being honest, we're super like brutally honest with each other. And we're not, uh, you know, we do specify, I don't mean this in this way, but you know, this is this. I actually think (laughs) we've lost that now. We used to say, oh, I don't mean it in this way. Whereas now we just go, we don't say it anymore. (laughs) We don't say that. It's like, babe. (laughs) No, <laughs> you can't say that. You can't, oh my god, you, you can't, can't wear that. <laughs> yeah, she goes, You can't say that, and I go, You can't wear that. It's like a pattern, isn't it? It's like, 
at least you can't say that. I was like, why? Why can I not say yeah, that? Yeah, but she says to me, I can. You can't, but I can. And exactly. I go, well, I can wear this and you can't. Yeah, exactly. So it just, it it honestly, works. it's, you just got to embrace all these little quirks that you've got with your family, your friends, you know, everyone's different yeah. and everyone's unique in their own way. And that's why you've got best friends and that's what brings you together yeah. rather than putting all these pressures again maybe your friend is at a different level in their career and maybe you're not at that level that you put yourself on by yourself and that, still. exactly yeah. and that's absolutely fine because that friend would love you just as much it doesn't matter where you are in your life I love that link to intrinsic qualities it's yeah. just literally like been a light bulb in my head that's gonna be it is though yeah. exactly what you've just said was our last episode about you know look at genuine like values what people have don't look at just surface level things the outside, it's, yeah it's not about you know what they've got it's about what they bring I'm just going to finish yeah, it on that. Yeah, it's yeah. not about what you've got. It's about what you, what bring, you bring to the table. I bring the table. I am the table, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't bring the table. I am the table, okay? You you can well, bring I'll the be, chairs I'll if be, you want. <laughs> I'll bring the table. I was going to say, I'll be the chairs. Then, then don't worry. I'm the table. Sit You're the chairs. <laughs> Sit on me. <laughs> and then yours oh, can yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. off me. <laughs> Oh God, we've lost it now. It's just ends <laughs> that's up there. it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. I know. I hope you in. enjoy this episode. It's been really close to our. Oh God, no! See, this is the thing. When we start laughing, <laughs> then we can't stop, and that's it. We've we're done then because <laughs> it's done. just not going to stop we're now. Done. We're done. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for watching again. Obviously, you know what to do. You can yeah. follow us on Instagram. You know, subscribe on YouTube. Again, we're not going to force you. You can do whatever you yeah. want. No, but it really does make a difference. It does. It? If it you does. enjoy our episodes, please yeah. do follow us. Give us a like. Give us a share. I know. Um, and no, we I'm... also want to wish a happy Mother's Day for Sunday <gasps> to Mother's all the lovely Day. mothers out there yeah. that work incredibly hard, you know, at, you know, <laughs> achieving this life that we all try and, first of all work out mm -hmm. what life is and how we navigate it and i just want to wish everyone a lovely sunday and lovely sunday everybody. we'll see yeah. you next sunday <laughs> <laughs> i know yeah yeah exactly okay. so love you guys Thank and you, we'll everybody. see you next time bye, bye.